Brought to you by the Grand Theater. This monthly country up and comer Dean Brody in the original Rock of Ages. Visit www.kingsandgrand.ca for more details. Hi, welcome to Queen's TV Profiles. Today we're here with Dr. George Elliott Clark, Canadian poet and playwright and writer. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So the first thing I want to ask you is that much of your work focuses on identity, so specifically the identity of African Canadians or African Acadians in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. What about this identity inspired you to write? Well, I guess it's because of the fact that uh, I come from this culture, that culture, and, and I, didn't, I didn't see that a lot had been written about our experience. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to write about the experiences of my ancestors and, and of my family and of, and of the people I grew up with and so on. And so it was, it was really that simple. I just wanted to write some material that would be around for others to enjoy and learn from uh, in years to come, hopefully. Yeah. Well, it's great. I read some of your work oh, and I really God. enjoyed it. Listen, well, so thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, tr I truly appreciate that. Thank you. So as a graduate of Queen's, you did get your PhD in English here. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and what it was like just being at Queen's? Well, I had a very unusual experience, I think, because I lived part of the time in Ottawa, and then I lived here in Kingston. And so part of my experience of Queen's was actually that of a commuter. And, and then coming here and studying and attending my classes, dropping by the library, and, and, and uh, so it was, a, it was probably an unusual student experience yeah. um, as, a, as opposed to really uh, being part of the, of the everyday life, so to speak, of my colleagues in the Department of English, uh, my fellow graduate students and sister graduate students. Uh, in fact, I think I heard that my nickname in the Department of English was the ghost. Because nobody ever saw me. I would come in, I'd do my classes, and I'd leave. Yeah. Uh, I had great professors. My supervisor was absolutely wonderful, Professor Matthews, the late John Pinborn uh, Matthews from Australia originally. Uh, one of the inventors of Commonwealth literature, post-colonial studies, if you like. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I was really lucky to work with him. I was his last graduate student. Wow. So, yeah, it was, it was really good. And, and the quality of my education was such that when I left here, when I graduated, I was hired at a prestigious <laughs> uh, American university within a few months of That's my graduation. Great. Yeah. So you won a lot of awards, including the Governor General's Award for Poetry and the Order of Canada. How does it feel to be recognized for your work in this way? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let there be more. Let there be more. I'm not, I, I, I have not refused a prize yet. I haven't, or an award yet. Um, no, it's, the recognition is important and it doesn't happen to everybody and it doesn't happen as much as we would like it to happen, I'm sure, uh, either for many of us. So I'm thankful, grateful for the recognition that I have uh, achieved or received and it encourages me to go on. Yeah. And that's, that's really the greatest part of it is that you say, oh, somebody thinks you're doing okay, so you want to try and accomplish more, you want to do more. Um, but I also have a great deal of respect for those artists and those writers who don't achieve uh, uh, a lot of public recognition or don't win awards or always are on the short list but never win. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy for, for those artists, those writers as well. And, and, uh, and we can all take comfort in the fact that the final judge of the quality of our work is not anybody who's living now. It's, <laughs> it's time. It's yeah. generations from now will decide whether anything that we've written now is of any consequence. Yeah. So that keeps me humble. <laughs> but in the meantime, while I'm around to enjoy it, keep giving me prizes, please. <laughs> don't put me on the short list and don't give me the prize. Put me on the short list and give me the prize. You're crying aloud. Don't make me feel disappointed. <laughs> yes. So lastly, as a professor of literature and a writer yourself, do you have any favorite novels or poems? What are they and why are they your favorite? Oh, that's a great <laughs> question. I mean, you're, and you're speaking to a professor of literature. Yeah. Was, so, I mean, okay, I could, there's a, there are a lot of favorite poems and a lot of favorite novels. And, there and are some, a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are quite a few in the English language, quite a few. 
You know, the Shakespeare guy wasn't too bad. No. Um, <laughs> just, just to name one author. But uh, the poem that comes to my mind immediately is the poem that made me want to be a poet. And it's actually a translation from a Tang Dynasty Chinese poet by the name of Li Po. And his work was translated from Japanese, not Chinese, but from Japanese, by uh, the American poet Ezra Pound. Okay. And the poem uh, is titled in Chinese, the Chinese original is The Song of Chen Ken. But Pound gave it a more modern title, The River Merchant's Wife, A Letter. Okay. And it's just one of the most powerful pieces of writing about yearning and longing that I've ever read. It was transformative. And I thought, holy smokes, here's this American guy writing in the voice of a Chinese woman from a thousand years ago and, and making me care. And I thought that was extremely powerful and I wanted to try to write something as good. Brought to you by the Grand Theater. This multi country up and comer Dean Brody in the original Rock of Ages. Visit www.kingsandgrand.ca for more details.